Amines are important industrially and biologically. And I've got a list there of some pretty well known amines. Amphetamine, codeine, nicotine, uh, quinine, caffeine. So there's quite a few there that you would have heard of all of those names, but you may not have thought of them all together in the context of their names ending in um, in, which gives us that clue about their structure, just like the old ending tells us about alcohols. Um, yeah, so a lot of them are quite biologically active, which is why we know some things about them. If they have a low molecular weight, they can also have a terribly unpleasant odour. And amines and ammonia, and ammonia doesn't smell pleasant either, um, these compounds are produced by anaerobic decomposition. And um, some of the amines produced are called putrescine and cadaverine. So that will give you an idea of, um, you know, putrescine obviously has the same root as putrid. So if we think of something as being putrid, um, it's not a pleasant smell. And the same with a cadaver is obviously a dead body. And um, this is part of the decomposition process for uh, animal and plant matter. So if you come across some roadkill um, and it doesn't smell real good, then you're getting a little bit of a nose full of putrescine and cadaverine. Now when we're naming our amines, um, it's the same, same rule as naming for alcohols in that we just take the E off the end of the parent alkane and instead of replacing it with ol for the alcohol, we just replace it with amine. And I've got a couple of examples here just to, so you can see here we've, um, we've got an amine. It's the only functional group present on this molecule and so the amine part is at the end of the name. For this molecule we've got two amine groups present and so it's a diamine and again there's nothing else present and so amine is the ending of the name. Cyclohexamine, uh, sometimes you'll see this represented where it's implied, the presence of those hydrogens are, is implied and we're only um, representing the carbons as the angles on this shape. So we can see that it has six sides, therefore we have six carbons and uh, that makes it cyclohexamine. But you can see that the moment we have something else present, the it's no longer um, important enough to have the amine at the end and so the amino group gets moved to the front of the name. And here we have an alkene and this one is one amino butuene and that's sort of been explained up here. The amines have low priority in the nomenclature hierarchy. So the hierarchy they're telling us the importance and nomenclature is um, telling us about naming, so it's naming importance. And so because they have a low priority, then they're generally named as a substituent, which means they get put on the front, rather than as the class of compound, which is what gets put at the end. Okay, so that's there's some rules about amines. Um, we have a couple of reactions to look at as well on page 27. And again, I'll direct you to your formula sheet flowchart so that you can see where these reactions sit there. But we can react uh, ammonia with an alpha halide. So Again, we're using this, this um, representation Rx. 
where the R represents the structural part of the molecule, and the X tells me that I have a halogen present. So this is an alkyl halide. And just like before when we were looking at our preparation of the alcohol, it doesn't matter where the halogen is, but wherever it is, will be the site of reactivity for this reaction. And so what are we going to produce? This is obviously the amine. NH2 is the amino group there. And uh, we've taken off a hydrogen as well to produce um, an um, ammonium halogen uh, salt there. So the example. We've got our chlorine there. This is where our um, our amino group will, will uh, um, be positioned on our molecule after the reaction. Second way we can, the second thing to look at here is a reaction of an alcohol with uh, ammonia. So both of these are reacting with ammonia. This time our, our other product is water. So we've, we've got a hydrogen off the ammonia here that has joined onto the, the chlorine that we removed from the alkyl halide. The same thing's going to happen for the water. That is balanced. In the first part, where you're reacting. Two NH three. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're right. And you have to write that in all every time I give you the equation. Um, if you're asked to to write an equation, yes, it should be balanced. Okay. But. It may, oftentimes, it's just a matter of recognising the reaction. So that's why I want you to be looking back at that flowchart on your formula sheets to make sure you can see where it is and that you know that this is another reaction that you can use in a process that you might be asked to make up in, a, in an exam where you don't have to talk about necessarily the conditions or yeah, the other products that might be possible. It might be just a, how could you make? In which case, you could say, well, I could react it with ammonia gas. Does that make sense? But unless you're specifically asked for a uh, balance or for an equation, you, um, you might be just asked in general terms. Any questions about amines? <coughs> 